In this tutorial, we're going to take a quick look at Adobe InDesign CS5. InDesign CS5 has some new features that are really amazing, so I'm going to try and show you a couple of those, but we won't have a whole lot of time to go through anything in depth. Anyway, um, we're going to kind of look at what the basics of creating documents are in it. So the very first thing that we would do is create a new document. And if you look at the, the options here, we basically have print and web as our intent. Now print, you'll see it comes up with print sizes that we're used to. If we go to web sizes, you'll see we've got our typical sizes, but then we've got a whole bunch of other stuff down here too. All these different sizes. Now I think that web sizes are going to become more popular as we have more device-based um, our tablet based computers that we're consuming digital magazines and such with. So digital publishing is really going to be popular as we go forward. Anyway, um, I'm going to go back to print. The reason why is I want to be able to see what it has for width and height and you'll see 51p and 66p. These are PICAs which are kind of a, an old standard way of dealing with um, documents but I'm going to actually close that document, go over to my preferences and change that actually over to inches. This way when I create my next new document it will come up with what I like. So you'll see that um, it's actually put me right into number of pages because it assumes that that's one of the first things that I'm going to change. So I'm going to change this to six pages and I also want to add columns which I can add here so I'll add some columns, six columns, and I can also change margins before I create the document. And by clicking on more options, I can see bleed and slug, which I don't really need to deal with right now, but sometimes it's very important for you to have that bleed. Anyway, um, I'm going to open up my pages panel right over here. I might have done it before um, in my next last tutorial, and you'll see I have all six pages here. But you'll notice the first page is by itself. That's common because it's usually going to be a right-hand page, um, and that would be maybe the cover of something and then going on. Let's just say that we wanted to reorganize our um, pages. Well, we can easily just try and drag pages around, but it wants to reflow them. So sometimes you have to know that you have to go to allow document pages to shuffle, and then you'll see the icon changes for the hand when it allows you to place the pages next to each other. Now you can move pages all sorts of different ways using this. So you can see I have a four page spread now which is kind of interesting. Now InDesign CS5 also has the ability to um, have pages of different sizes. So I could create another page here and you'll see that that one page is a different size. You can see there's another one that's really different. So that's one of the new features of this. I'm going to go ahead and take it back to the letter size and then try and reflow this so that I have two and two. There we go. So I've got the spread basically set back the way I want. Now I can come back and turn off the shuffles. <clears throat> oh, look at that. So I might need to come back. Whoops. Might need to come back to that and allow that to come back. There we go. Got my pages. All right, now I'm going to double click on the first page here, and double clicking puts me on that page that I'm seeing. Now, notice that you can select pages um, and it won't take you to that view. If you double click on it, it will take you to that particular page view. Anyway, I'm now going to adjust things like my margins and my columns by going up to layout, and you'll see margins and columns. And uh, now I can move my columns, and you'll see that's changing, or I can even change my grid, my uh, margins. Now this doesn't really look that cool until you have some sort of frame in there. So we're going to do that here in just a second. Let's create a frame and you can go down and use the rectangle tool or you can even use the, the rectangle frame tool and it's all pretty much the same thing. Basically you'll see that you create frames and they will fit to, um, they will snap to the edges of your um, columns, which is really, really great. Now, you can create graphic frames or you can create text frames. doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and put in just a little bit of text there so you can see that I do have text in that frame. Now, the only difference between these right now is that these frames up here at the top don't have any content. Now, we can easily give them content such as fills and strokes, which is no big deal. And then, of course, we could also give our 
fills to our text frames as well, and the text frames can also include the uh, text itself. These other frames can include anything like graphics, if I wanted to import some graphics into them, be no problem at all. Now the difference between the graphic objects here and a frame is actually really nothing at all. It's basically the same thing. The only difference is um, it doesn't have an X through it. and uh, but it's exactly the same thing, so there is no difference at all. Anyway, now I want to go back to layout and actually change the margins and columns, and you'll see here's where things are pretty cool. Now, notice nothing's changing yet, but if I go back and turn on the enable layout adjustment, here's where it's cool, and you'll see it automatically adjusts my layout depending upon how I move my margins. So that's one of the great features of InDesign. Now InDesign has other great features when it comes to automatically moving things, like the ability, this is a new tool, to be able to, to actually control columns together. I mean, it's really cool what you can do. It's, it's one of the new, I don't even know what it's called, gap tool or something like that, but that's one of the coolest tools that I think you should definitely play with. Anyway, now we're going to go on with um, text settings. So I'm going to create a new text frame, and I'm going to fill that text with some, uh, what is it called? Somewhere here, placeholder text. There it is. Now the placeholder text just gives it so, gives it so I can show what it looks like to re uh, format text. Now one way that we used to reformat our text was to drag out each individual frame that we wanted. And this means that we would have to click and drag and then we can link one frame to another. If I click on this frame you'll see the plus then I can link that to the other frame. Well this is ridiculous. There's no reason to do that anymore. Why don't I just extend this frame over and then come up to the frame settings. If I go to my type tool then I can go to my paragraph settings and I can do things like change it into grids automatically or change it into columns automatically. Now another cool feature about this is the ability for me to actually select text inside that paragraph right there and actually span this across. So this is a new feature. I can span that text that I just selected across all the entire, all the columns. Then I can come back to this and do no span. So that first sentence has been spanned across and nothing else. Now I know that I'm not very close in, but if I control enter and zoom up a little bit, now you'll see that's a little bit better. Now when it comes to text settings, we've got a million and one settings, um, but the only thing that's really super important about using this is making sure that once you've set your settings and you have things like your um, space after or before paragraphs, so I've just put some space after the paragraphs, then what you always want to make sure that you do is use the styles. So if I go over to styles, I can go to character, paragraph, and object styles, and these are all pretty common to use. And what you want to do always is set up styles for the text. So I select this text, then I go to the styles, and I create a new style. And now I'll call that first sentence and then this other text I'll create as body. If I could spell body it'd be great. So the cool thing about using um, styles is that if we ever want to go back and change something about our object, so I'm going to go ahead and give that a color change, you'll notice that the style will show as a plus, which means that I could go back and change that back to the original by pressing Alt and the uh, particular style, but it won't override the settings if I just click on it. Now, let's say that I want to change everything to that setting. I want all of that text to be green. Then all I have to do is right click and say redefine the style and all all of the text throughout my entire document that has that style will be changed to that particular color and of course all the other settings. So if you go into the settings of a paragraph style there's a bazillion different things and we're not going to go through any of those in this tutorial. I just want you to be aware that character styles, um, paragraph styles, character styles, and one of the new things which is object styles 
are great. And with object styles, you can do all sorts of different styles, meaning you can have something as simple as just what is the fill and stroke, but you can also have other other options about this such as corner options. So I can do fancy corners on this and that can be part of that style. So if I create that style, it's now here, I'll call it yellow. Then I can go to the next object and click on it and give it the same style. There you go. So using styles, um, whether it's paragraph styles, character styles, and object styles, are just a huge thing about using InDesign, and we'll of course get into those in later tutorials. I just want you to be aware of that you really, really want to use them. Now another thing that um, has been put into the new version of CS5 is a lot more interactive elements. Now a way to see this is if we go and look at our different panel presets, we can go to the interactive panel preset and you'll see we have things like animation and timing and preview and media and this is really quite amazing. You can create um, animation on an object and go ahead and give it some sort of animation. Let's see, preset choose, I will fade in. So you'll see there's a quick view of it and if I want to go to my preview this is actually what the page would kind of look like if it was to load and you'll see that object loaded up there. Now what this is for is for publishing for Flash. So that's one of the other new features about this. Now um, there's lots of other things about this I should say. You have the ability to create all sorts of different types of buttons and have them do all sorts of different types of actions and these work in Flash and um, the interactive PDF output as well. And so this is something that I think as di digital publishing becomes more of a reality, you're going to see a lot more use of this stuff. But anyway, when it comes to exporting this, you have the ability now to export it to Dreamweaver, you have the ability to export interactive PDFs, you have the ability to export for Flash. So you'll see even here is a Flash um, FLA file which I could open up in Flash or I can actually just output the Swift file itself. It's pretty rich in how many different ways you can output these documents. So I really just wanted you to be aware that InDesign is no longer just for um, print documents. It's really for interactive documents and everything as well and I think as we move forward you're going to see a lot more of that in the future. So um, this is kind of just a quick introduction, of course, there are lots of other skills that you're quite aware of, being able to zoom in and zoom out with the control minus, use your hand tool to, to move around, and the fact that almost all the time you're going to be on that black arrow. But um, you will discover a lot of those features in the tutorials as we go through our projects. And uh, let's go on for those.